Hello again. Welcome to another episode of Spotlight on Home. Hey guys. All right. So today I thought we'd kind of tackle a topic that comes up a lot, especially for homeschool moms. I think it doesn't really matter what size, you know, like what your family size is, how many kids you're actually homeschooling. Um, it's just sometimes it's like, how do I homeschool when life feels so overwhelming? So that's actually what we're going to talk about today. It's kind of like giving you some tips to kind of get ahead of the curve of overwhelm and then... Um, you know, accept the season of life you're in and just kind of help you manage mm -hmm. to get through it. And this is not dependent on your wealth. It's not mm. even dependent whether or not you're a single parent or a parent with a with a spouse that works far away or is in, you know, some country fighting somewhere. Um, it still happens. Um, you're No one's immune. And actually, those of you might be a little bit more susceptible to some of the overwhelm mm. uh, since you have a lot more going on in your life. Um don't worry, we have some solutions. Yeah. So really when, um, you know, there's like part mindset and then part just really like having some tools and some mm -hmm. systems in place. So like life is going to get overwhelming at times. That's kind of life, <laughs> you know, like life. <laughs> parents get sick and we're especially us, like we're at an age where we have elderly parents. Um, we have little kids. You're kind of in that middle generation where you're expected to, to help care for the parents. You're expected obviously to help care for your kids um, and, and all the things that encompass that. And then not only to mention like your own health and wellness and getting involved with just, you know, your own jobs and building careers mm -hmm. and, and managing work and, and just also now add on to that a layer of homeschooling. You know, you want you took that responsibility on. So it just feels like, okay, life is overwhelming and crazy. How in the world can I actually still homeschool my kids when I'm running to doctor's appointments or I'm shuffling my parents here and there or, you know, I, I can't even find the table to sit down and, and homeschool them. <laughs> you know, like there's so many this is things. All it's so experience talking that, here. Yeah, probably, yeah. you know, and, but it's true. And it's like, or I just had a new baby and I have a two-year-old and I have a four-year-old and I have a six-year-old and I have an eight-year-old. And, and it's like, how do I homeschool and also take care of a new baby? When we had our last baby, we were homeschooling. He was he, our eighth child. And then they decided to renovate after we had waited for about a year mm -hmm. to get them started. They texted, they literally texted on our way home from the hospital, and we're like, oh, are you cool if we start Monday? <laughs> and like, that was like tomorrow or the okay, next day. Okay, I guess. Yeah. You know, so I had a, a week old baby. I had, um, or not even a whole week old, right? Like a few day old a few baby. Days. You know, I had at the time like a four year old, a six year old, an eight year old, a 10 year old. All of them needed me to help them homeschool, plus construction going on. And it was overwhelming. So it's like, okay, how do I handle life like when life gets overwhelming we had no kitchen sink for how long oh 40 days we were out of a kit oh i had no goodness. kitchen sink and no oven or range top for 40 days with a newborn right. <laughs> and and right. preschoolers and yeah it was crazy so i get it like i understand where you're coming from when life feels crazy so what do you do so this is i just wanted to um encourage you so what i kind of had um what, what i've done and and i you know i have another business um called health wellness and chocolate and i work with women who are trying to lose weight and one of the techniques i use with them is called floors and ceilings or minimum baseline so that is actually um what i want to share with you today and kind of help you start thinking in your own life okay what are my minimum baselines like what do i have to do what's the minimum i have to do every day in my life to to make it sustainable okay and then anything else so that would be considered your floor and then anything beyond that would be like your ceiling so when life is good everything's just kind of working out those are the ceilings like okay what can i do when when life isn't crazy and i don't have to run out and i i can get more things done at home or just things like work out go ahead you're smirking. I, I know <laughs> I'm, I'm smirking <laughs> For Go ahead. A, a very important reason, and what we're about to tell you is probably nothing you're ever going to be told in the traditional way. It'll be, and even we're going to dress it up a little bit, but cutting to the chase, lower your standards. <laughs> <laughs> we have been lowering our standards. Lower since. the standards. That the, should be our tech. Like, Katie and Chris, lowering standards you, since 2000. Right. Do you, do you remember um, the... Lowered expectations. That one, yes. The, the <laughs> Saturday awesome. Night Live thing. Um, and I say it, it's okay because if you remember that life is a various number of seasons. And True. right now the leaves are falling off the trees and it's 
I don't know, we didn't seem to get the burst of color we were hoping mm. for, kind of disappointed. So it's just dead. Um, so, but that's appropriate. And there is an appropriate time. You, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of moms equate it to s- spinning the plates. Oh yeah, totally. I've done that too. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, you, you, maybe you can top out at 15 plates mm-hmm. before there's a shattering going on. Yeah. And what we're trying to avoid is a shattering yeah. we're, in your we're life. Like decide... And that's what we're here yeah. to tell you. That's actually Why don't really you good. only do seven plates? I was even going to say five. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say three, but I said, um, (laughs) you're always telling me, come on, shoot for the stars. So, so. Spin five plates, you know, be a hero. Yeah, you know, do do seven. Well, seven was half of almost what I was talking about. So you can trim it down because otherwise, you know, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Ron Swanson. He's just, don't half rear end, you know, two things. Whole rear end, one. And really, because in the end, no one's going to remember some of these little odds and ends right. that you let go. Yeah. They're, they're going to remember that you were there, truly engaged and mm-hmm. truly involved. And then the fruit comes. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's the old saying? You plant a pear for an heir. You yeah. you go through all this yeah. and the fruit comes kind of when you're gone. Mm-hmm. So don't worry. Don't panic. The advice we're giving you is solid. <laughs> Even though it doesn't sound anything like that's the energy. You can do anything. I you know. can't do everything. All you can once. do everything. Yeah, yeah you, just not yeah. all at once. You know, right? I was actually joking with Joe on the way home. I said, why did God invent time? So everything didn't happen all at once. Mm. You yeah, know, sure. all right, th- there's a season and there's yeah. a season of, of death. There's a season of, 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 you know, the winter and there's a season of life. Otherwise, you wouldn't appreciate it. So don't panic. We're going to tell you something kind of weird and <laughs> it's really for your own good. Yeah, yeah. So like, for example, so with homeschooling, have a minimum baseline set up. What do they have to bare minimum get done every day? Now, this is not like this is all they're going to do for an entire school year. This is when life feels overwhelming and I was up all night with a kid who was throwing up and you know, I'm, I'm up to my neck now in dirty laundry and you know I had an unexpected emergency with an elderly parent and I had to be driving them. Like right. These are like the minimum baselines. What do we minimally have to do when life goes sideways? What's my minimum? What do I need to get done, right? So that could be, all right, I know for us personally, it was like, let's at least get the three R's done. And here's why. If we could at least get math done and we could at least get um, so that like math would include like maybe learning a concept or practicing something and then doing some math drills or, or, or you know, like just reviewing their math facts and having them handle that. Um, I felt pretty good about that. Also, if I could read out loud to them or have them read something to me so that they were able to... Um, you know, get some reading practice in and maybe some handwriting practice. I was like, okay, if those, so those, that was my minimum baseline. As long as they got the three R's, right? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. I knew that in the summer we could be taking field trips. We could listen on the way in the, in the car for audio books. We could, you know, there's other, like there was another season where I didn't have to do all the subjects every single day in order to have a successful school day. I was able to say, okay, when life goes sideways, these are the minimum things. These are my minimum baselines that I want to at least accomplish for this season of my life. So when I had the baby and he's a week old and there's literally like saws and hammers and, you know, like, like loud sounds going on and it's hard to like sit down and cuddle with a good book. You know, it's like, okay, what's our minimum? A bunch of gnarly dudes. Yeah, and yeah. Trying to be discreet. Trying yeah, to feed, trying to nurse and, and all a baby, things, you know the complicated, like you know how smirks tricky and, that is. Yeah. yeah, like no, and and Gross. so and then you know <laughs> trying to cook a decent meal and you know like there's so so have your minimum baselines where it's like okay I need to at least accomplish this and and allow yourself the grace to just like okay it's gonna be crazy for the next month but this is what needs to happen for us to have a, you know come out on the other side. And we'll be okay because I know history and science, those are things I could make up in the summer or, you know, we could we could be doing that another time. Like it's not crucial or the reading could be them reading a science or history book. Right. And so then you're kind of like checking off a bunch of pegs, which is or a bunch of boxes. And or whatever, I, I, I don't too, say that might know? be a scary thought where you're like you're, where if you're coming into this brand new and you say you're saying you're going to do all these things. What, yeah. three months yeah. from now? How is that even possible? I know. I know. 
wait you'll see yeah. you'll see yeah. it, it's going to make total sense right yeah like as you get as you get more confident too i think confidence is a huge thing to allow yourself the opportunity to have to give yourself space so when life is crazy you don't feel like oh my gosh i'm so overwhelmed and now i have to homeschool my kids for six hours today like how am i going to do this it's kind of like no do the base you know do your minimum baseline knowing that when life isn't crazy you know you'll be able to to fill in whatever you may have missed during that time and that eliminates so much stress so much emotional energy so much from you and then have like ceilings like okay when we have time we are going to go and listen to um you know a book on tape on our way to the ocean and we're going to you know identify yeah we're going to identify tide pools once we get to the ocean and then we're going to do a whole unit on science with the ocean and and the ecosystem like, you know what i mean you want to like, go to the beach is that I what you're love telling the ocean. me <laughs> i would go to the it's ocean it's november every day. 6th today yeah but i don't think we're going to the beach no, anytime soon i'm an east coast jersey funny. girl in the that's ocean funny. It's my He said my ocean place. about six times yeah, in a row. I love the ocean. Yeah. I do. It's my happy place. If, right. He he's worried about tsunamis. Yeah. That's, so we we're don't not live in there. We don't live by the ocean, but he works in New York City. Yeah. So Shore the Jersey town. Shore is just like uh, you know, hop, skipping, and jump away. But we're in Pennsylvania. You know, it's it's okay. I'm coping, but still. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like that's just like so that could uh-huh. be your minimum baseline for school. All right. And then like set up for yourself, do some thought downloads and and, like kind of take off of your brain. All right. What do I need to have in place as far as the home goes? What are some minimum baselines for your home? And this is where I think lowering your standards comes in. It doesn't mean you have to live like a slob and live in filth. If anything, what I mean when I say minimum baselines is when life is not overwhelming, get ahead of the housework. Eliminate stuff you don't need. Get rid of a lot of extra toys that really just create clutter. Um, go in and, and like get systems established for for your mail, for the paper piles, for the um, laundry, like for the dishes. Like get some systems in place. And actually, that's one thing. We're still when, working on the, yeah. That well, mail when one. when we we had an awesome mail system, yes. but then our house is tiny, and we had to eliminate our desk on our first floor. And um, our mail yes. system was also eliminated with the desk. So we have to, I actually so have a the, solution. The only s- other place do. where we have slots <laughs> is between the, the st- step spindles. <laughs> so, and there's like, oh, the main bills are here. And, you know, some paperwork we want to hold on is on this step. Yeah, and then, true. you know, deposited checks and stuff are here. And then we got to kind of, and then the toddler comes by and just kicks it all kicks over the it. floor. And, and then, then we're we forced to reassort it. it. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's a terrible. Disaster. It's a terrible system, but it is a system. It's currently <laughs> but, our system. Yeah, the standard is a little yeah, lower than ideal, right but in, until well, we were just saying, you know, if if we had a bigger house, yeah, yeah, uh, there's ten of us. It would make so there's tiny. ten of us in the, in a in more or less eighteen to two, eighteen hundred to two thousand square feet. Yeah, it's tiny. Um, you know, we 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 had. I have nowhere to put anything. And she's like, oh, you know, it's a scarcity. We have too much stuff. It's a, there's there's some of that in the house. But there's also literally nowhere to put That's anything. True. If we, not to eliminate children, but, you know, if if we had less kids, we would each have an office, mm. which are currently bedrooms. I said this desk that we're, we're talking to on here, you'd, we'd have this much space. The bookshelves behind us, we each have one in that office. Our room would double in, our own room would double in size. Just sure. because. And that's fine. You know, but currently, I mean, we have cheapo, uh, I don't know, particle board desks. Desks. From like Walmart. Yeah. From, <laughs> As our nightstands. They're stands. horrible. We swapped the they're, desks out. I'm sorry. We swapped our nightstands out yeah. for our desks because we're working on our business yeah, and that was our priority. Right. But we know it's a season. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, and it's like you got to start somewhere. So right. we can't wait for perfection to... Right, you know, like you you'll never do anything. You have, you'll right? never do and anything. And that's kind of the point of this: is like work with what you have, work within the boundaries that God has established in your life right now, in the in the budgetary confines, in the time confines, in your own family logistic confines. Like I don't know about you, but when I have a newborn or a baby or even a two year old, I don't like going places and running around with them. It's exhausting. So like th- that also is a co- you know a confining moment. Fortunately, like, I like to shop. Yeah, he's he's very extroverted, and I am not. So we are a good team. 
Okay, so think about in your own life, like what are your minimum baselines for your homeschool? And then what are your minimum baselines for your home? All right, what can you pare down? What can you eliminate? What, um, you know, what systems can you start to implement? So even like paring down the laundry. I've heard people have say like, you know what? I have five shirts and five pairs of pants for my kids and like two pairs of pajamas and everything else we got rid of. And every other day I do the laundry so they're never out of clean clothes. The Amish are onto something. You know, and it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. that does solve a lot of the piles of laundry that lay around, right? And then it's never, it never gets to the point where it's overwhelming. Um, I was listening to just last week, a woman who was teaching on systems for organizing and decluttering your home. And she said, only have enough plates for the amount of people that are in your home and only have like one spatula, one soup ladle, one um, spoon, like we a are serving not spoon. Doing this. Well, here was her theory though. Oh. She said rather than the sink filling up with all these dirty dishes as people come in and use them and put them away, when someone wants something, they have to clean it in order to use it. And so, <clears throat> you know, rather than like keeping the dirty one in the sink and then going and getting another one and now you have two dirty spoons or two you know two soup ladles that are filthy you have to wash like you'll never have more than just one soup ladle dirty at a time and she said that and she said she's been a home organizer and she said i know it sounds like insane but when i have convinced people to actually implement that she said there it was a game changer for them because their sinks did not pile up with dishes it just didn't happen when did i move into the apartment oh 97 yeah, 96 or 97? 96, 97. I moved into an apartment. And uh, it was originally with my good friend, Sean. And he was only there a month. I don't even remember why. It doesn't matter. And I had one plate, one okay. fork, one knife and spoon, and, you know, That's one so cup. You. That's because, so you. Because, A, I was kind of lazy. But, B, I knew my limitation. And I said, I'm not, I will never wash a, dish, a, a thing full of dishes, especially if I didn't do it. Um, it's just not going to happen. So I, this is how I teach myself to, to take care of myself. Because I was so well taken care of, I really didn't know how to take care of myself. My, my mother was a saint. Uh, but she didn't actually do me any favors by, you know, basically doing everything for me. Thanks nope. for nothing, Mary Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Mom. Um, and I ended up moving in with a real idealist. And he comes in with stacks of dishes and a, a box full of cups and glasses. And I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea because there's going to be dirty dishes. And then you're going to be sad about it that I'm not doing anything about it. And uh, no, man, no, no. Well, one, as soon as he brought it up to me, I said, mine's clean. I said, all this accumulation I tried to avoid. And that's a little rough, but you can trim it back. Even when we went to a smaller house, mm -hmm. there were aspects of it. This, I love this it. sucker I, cleans up quick, uh, especially the, yeah. you got a few extra hands. Yeah. Um, that this place cleaned up quick. We had favorite. a much much larger house. Yeah, it, it took a. I mean, it was a long. A it's long, not a braggadocious thing. It was it was a long house. It it you know if you had to bring something into that laundry room, yeah, you were out of the room for two minutes before you come back. Yeah, you know especially because it was probably yeah. something else to pick up along the way. Yeah, um, no, it yeah. was definitely more. And I do love that about this house. It, it warms up. There quick, was a lot of places to quick. put stuff there, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we don't have anywhere yeah. to put things yeah. there. Yeah. So, so also when you're thinking, okay, how can I homeschool when life feels overwhelming? You know, so three R's, think of housework. And then also think of outside things. And again, do the minimum baselines and do your floors and ceilings. So when life is not overwhelming, go to the woman's brunch at church. Go to the tea socials. Go, And I'm not saying that community and, and, and like getting out and socializing isn't important. It is. But if you're overwhelmed by all your outside commitments, pare down as much as possible. So make a list of all the things like you're committed to or expected to be at, and then just start like, okay, this is going to go for now. And you can simply say, listen, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I have other, I have an, another priority that's more pressing right now. And it's not a lie. You, your own mental wellness might be the priority that is more pressing right now. You know, like you just can't make it because you really have other things going on in your life and it's and it's okay to do that for a season be like look it's really crazy right now i'll catch up with you next time sorry and yeah, it's okay well, you know you said something important there um that you're not gonna lie i mean you can go to the brunch mm. so there's there's two lies you're gonna tell one or the other or maybe both you're either gonna lie and say everything's great <laughs> when it's not 
Or what you're going to do is you're going to end up telling them, oh, yeah, everything's a mess and this and that and the other thing and I don't know what to do. Well, you do, you do know what to do. Yeah, but you're not there to do it. Not like, there because to do you're it. out feeling right. like you're obligated to and, do all you know, these if, other if, things. If you just come off as the frazzled hot mess. mom, <laughs> hot mess, or yeah. or the guy who doesn't have his act together, right. you know, then you kind of become not you know, not the object of not ridicule, but you're just gonna be, oh, you know, so and so, she's always this or, Well you're not your best. You're not your right? best. Like, you, you, you we want this to look best. good. So if you say, Well, I'm not gonna go to the brunch for three months mm-hmm. and commit and get a few things done or or at least get things on the right track now when you go to brunch you can tell the ladies yeah Yeah. man things were a mess but uh you know we we started doing this thing and you can even tell and then you can be the well you tell them you heard it on you know spotlight on home please that'd be great yeah and then you know so do your you do the housework you know eliminate the non-essentials and the outside activities and then see okay now like maybe do another thought download write down all the things like in your mind that are like really um feeling overwhelming or feeling really pressing for you or feeling like you know this is what's overwhelming me and then write all those thoughts down and um what you might notice is you know what might feel overwhelming is just that it's looming and it's not actually the task it's just that your brain keeps reminding you of it and you're using emotional energy and that usage of emotional energy is really what's overwhelming you taxing yeah Yeah. it's not necessarily the task that's presenting you with so and you You can nuts right yeah yeah we've talked about that we talked about nuts before but then the, the other thing too is like can you delegate anything that's coming up um you know we always we call it divide and conquer like what can you take on right now um, and I'll do this instead, you know, like, so the perfect example was two of our boys had a football game this morning. Our other son had a bunch of friends sleep over last night and their parents were coming to pick them up. So like we both typically would go to the football game and I would go with the little boys and then, you know, we'd kind of watch the football game, go to the playground. And it's just like a nice um, thing to do on a Saturday morning. But knowing his friends were here, it's like, okay, how can we divide and conquer? I don't want to leave a bunch of 13 year olds unattended. While we're off, so like, or you're calling like, the moms yeah, and yeah. Oh, I, I gotta go, and yeah, and then, not, then, you know. then you come yeah. off as the scatter, yeah, and you're, so, not. No. you're not, no, so you know, we divided and conquered. So, like, is there someone who you can delegate tasks to, even if they are not going to carry it off perfectly, but it's like a lick and a promise, this, this, you know? I don't know, I never heard that, but yeah, that's a pretty important it, you know, what'd you say to me this morning? Can, can they do it at least 80%? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can't take them 80% of the way to football, but, mm-hmm. you know, for, you know, can you, can you just vacuum real quick? Yeah. Have, have the, they're going to do a terrible vacuum. job. You it's know, it's going to be terrible, but it's yeah. 80% better than it was, you know, <laughs> lowered that standard. <laughs> we should get t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> lowered expectation. Fun. Yeah. So, and then like, think of other ways you can just simplify your life. Is there a season where you can just use paper plates? Can you just have some frozen dinners? Like, so when life isn't crazy, Make some soups, make some chilies, freeze them. So when life is calmer, or you know, like do that when life is calmer, so that when life is crazy, one, you're not taken by surprise, but two, you're not, you like you have it already done and then you're not grabbing fast food and then feeling grosser because of that. Not or, for nothing, it's you know. November. Yeah. Uh, get that crock pot out. Mm-hmm. Let that sucker be doing three to four <laughs> days worth of your stuff. It's Why true. not? It's and true. it's all it all reheats, it's right. pretty easy. Uh, you know, make so much of it, you're sick of it, freeze it, yeah. and have it again in another week or yeah. two. And actually, know. I want to do a whole podcast episode yeah. on, yeah. like, nourishing meals that are quick and under 30 minutes. And mm. then I actually do have already a grocery list that I'll I'll give you guys a link for, so you mm. can, like, go ahead and download it. And it's like a... Yeah, that was pretty popular yeah, on yeah. the other thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's a quick grocery list, and you can make, like, 13 or 14 meals from it and for 30 minutes or less that are nourishing, that aren't um, overwhelming. And, and um, you know, so it's like... So really, it's just up to you. If you're feeling overwhelmed, what I would say do first is to take out a pen and paper and just do, um, you know, dump all your thoughts onto a piece of paper and write them out. Um, don't censor yourself. Just write down like, and, and you could do it like, okay, I have this to do. This is coming up. This is why I feel overwhelmed. Um, you know, this is the pain points. I like, kind of write down the pain points for you. What's you don't have to show it to anybody. No, this no, way this you're is for you. Totally. Yeah. You know. And then you can start to figure out, okay, what, what can I delegate? Is there anything here? Can I just delegate it? Who, who, um, who can do this job just as good as I can, or even if it's not as good as me, 
just enough that it get it gets done and and you know we're okay and then um what can i eliminate right now what what can just um be put on the back burner for now while this craziness is going on um and then what can i simplify what's a really great book that can teach the kids some history during the time period we're learning about and a quick google search will solve that for you and like that could be for reading right now and it could be for our english and it could be for history and then i'll just have them do a math worksheet and that's what we're going to do for the next two weeks while we're in crisis right. mode and then and then listen if you know life is gonna go sideways like that is life but if you constantly find that life is always going sideways for you um eventually when we open up the membership for spotlight on home you need to get in there because we will definitely be able to help you manage your mind manage your time help you get those systems in place that you need help you kind of eliminate the chaos and the clutter and then just kind of help you um, become successful at managing your home and managing your home school and managing your mind and managing your life and, well, and help it, you with the confidence and like all you said things, yeah. um, we, we've discussed this about different types of people if they have problems with you if you're always having problems yeah. with people it's actually you yeah um, life goes sideways so every now and then I have a problem with somebody you know, but I don't have a problem with everybody. Right. Uh, most people kind of enjoy me. And uh, at least you do. I do. I like you. Uh, <laughs> you know, but if you get a problem everywhere you go, every employer, every uh, associate is going to problem. It's you. So if, if life is, if life seems to always be sideways with, without, you know, certain like really ludicrous exceptions, you know, yeah. a major illness yeah, or, no, no. you know, s some sort of tragedy, it's probably... Uh, Maybe just a mismanagement. A mismanagement right? on your part. Or like part. you just don't know the tools or the systems. And it, but but the the wonderful thing about that versus having trouble with people, it's probably easier to steer yourself back into where that's not the problem. Mm. Some people are just you know a headache all the time. Um, you this this is something that can be coached. We're oh, both yeah. coaches. This is something that we can help you with if you yep. want it. So. Yeah sign in sign up and, oh yeah we uh, do have a wait list on the yeah. on the website if you're interested in the membership and you want to get in first and be one of the um you know the founding members of the membership we'll let you know when that opens and you can get in and it's going to be priced very reasonably so that um but you'll get you'll get a hold of a, a whole bunch of videos that we're making mm -hmm. right now on our systems and it'll just help you not feel so overwhelmed so that right. because i really think like your your homeschool is a direct reflection of your home life and how you manage that and if if it's out of whack or you're always you, you won't homeschool long if you can't get it together right. because you're going to get frustrated you're going to constantly feel overwhelmed you're going to constantly feel stressed and you're going to be really tempted to throw in the towel and we don't want that for you we want you to be successful homeschoolers we right. want you to have a thriving home and family life and relationships and, that blossom um we're rooting for you so we're definitely right. um and we're not going to be want you to do this. absolutely legalist if you no. can't by all means, don't wreck your kids. <laughs> um, but we we do know that there are very good reasons for homeschooling. And we're going to go over those in the next mm, episode. Yeah. Because we know the family's coming over. Or you're going to show up. Yeah, the holidays are The holidays are, are coming. <laughs> and, and, you know, Aunt so-and-so is going to be like, what? You, you, why would you want to, you know? Yeah. I still don't know why you'd want to. But it, it, there are good reasons, you know. I, I, I joke about that. You know, why would I want to? Uh, that was one of the opening lines. Why would you even want to? Mm. We know it's in your heart. You know there are good reasons, but maybe you don't know how to um, word them. And I mean, we'll even maybe we'll make a little cheat sheet. Oh, with we could. Certain statistics. We could in that's the a, in the a, podcast, yeah, like in notes, the notes and stuff like that. We yeah, can maybe we'll, give you a quick thing. You can yeah, screenshot we'll even put it, it on, and yeah, have it on your phone. Put too. it on your phone, and you could under the table. It's like, well, did you know twenty five percent of <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, no, that'd and, be fun. Uh, we could totally do that. But that'll the, be the next. Leave episode. the ant. Yeah, that's next episode. So yeah. I mean. You got to stick with us. We're, we're, yeah. we, we got some great stuff for you. Yeah. So. Yeah. We have a ton of stuff coming up. Is there up. more? No, that's All it. Right, cool. <laughs> so that's it. if you are ready, uh, you head over to spotlightonhome.com. Get on the wait list for the homeschool, for the Spotlight on Home membership. But in the meantime, too, you can also sign up for the 10 tips to begin homeschooling now. It's not just about starting homeschool. Uh, we go through and give you some prompts and stuff to think about mm. how to get your homeschool kind of like back on track if things have been going a little kooky for you um so you definitely want to grab that pdf yeah all right very good Anything so else? glad you came all right. and we can't wait to see you again yeah awesome guys have a good week